Here we are on this glorious sunny day at the magnificent Sudley Castle, home to many gems and hidden treasures. But one of the fascinating things about Sudley is how its history is intertwined with powerful women. Over there, for example, is the last resting place of Catherine Parr, the sixth and final wife of Henry VIII. She lived her final days here, married to her fourth husband, Thomas Seymour. Also, the young Elizabeth I played in these very gardens when she was a child, living here with Catherine and Thomas Seymour. It seems as though it takes a powerful woman to run and manage this place. And we're here today to tell the story of one of those women, Emma Dent. And we're going to tell that story and follow her journey through her diaries. Sudley Castle was left as a neglected ruin after the Civil War of the mid 17th century. Indeed, it was used as a public house at one stage, the Castle Arms, until two businessmen saw and fell in love with it at the beginning of the 19th century. These two men were the brothers William and John Dent. The family made a fortune from the glove industry and having done so, wanted a little place in the country to symbolise their newfound status. Not bad for selling gloves. Neither William nor John Dent had children of their own, so they left the castle to their nephew, John Coucher, and whose memorial is here. Now, John Coucher Dent was extremely fortunate in his choice of a wife. He married into the Brockenhurst family, a particular woman called Emma Brockenhurst, who then, of course, became Emma Dent, and her memorial uh, is over here in this chapel. John Coucher Dent and Emma unfortunately had no children, so Emma spent her time and energies devoting herself to the local community, to its schools, to its charities, and also restoring this wonderful castle here at Sudley. But she was much, much more than just an average Victorian lady of the manor. She wanted to see more of the outside world. She traveled, she wrote diaries, she collected memorabilia everywhere she went enough to fill this entire room. Emma Dent was by any measure an extraordinary woman, traveler, diarist, avid collector, philanthropist, charity worker, the list goes on and on. To discover Emma, is to enter a treasure trove. She catalogued every single item in her possession, whether it be an autograph, a coin collection, a stamp collection, or the tokens of local tradesmen and businessmen. Emma loved hobbies. She devoted much time and energy to seeking out new ways to spend her time. But first and foremost, she loved travel. It was one of her first passions. But railways were just taking off during Emma's life, not just home here in England, but also across the continent. But Emma never really liked railways. No, railways were dull for Emma. She writes in her diaries how traveling in trains is boring. You can't really see anything properly outside of the carriage windows. So for her, it had to be horse and carriage. She was always in the right place at the right time. She was in Pompeii, just as they were unveiling new finds uncovered from the ashes of Vesuvius. She also spent time in Constantinople where she records the wonders of the whirling dervishes and even made it to the Crimea where she picked flowers that she took home 
and sent to Florence Nightingale, who became a friend of hers. In Spain, she records in her diaries the death of a matador, and she's horrified by the spectacle of bullfighting. Unusual, perhaps, for a woman whose husband, back home, is master of the local hunt. And later on in life, Emma actually devotes herself to animal rights and becomes a member of what today we know as the Royal Society for the Protection of Cruelty to Animals. And also, curiously, in this age of fitness obsession, she records how many steps that she had walked every year using this newfangled device, the pedometer. Emma didn't just collect things. She was almost obsessive in the way in which she recorded what she collected and catalogued the things that she had in her possession. A wonderful example of that behaviour are these autograph books where she doesn't just fill in the scrapbooks in chronological order. She has a different scrapbook for the different type of person. She kept them in separate volumes. One was devoted to ecclesiastical figures of her day. Bishops, prominent clergymen. Another was devoted to painters and sculptors and other eminent artists. Similar too with playwrights and actors and politicians. Much of what we see here today at Sudley is thanks to the tireless restoration work of Emma Dent. But Emma was more than just a restorer. Through her diaries, through her scrapbooks, through her travels, what she's given us is a microcosm for the world in which she lived. One might say that she's a lens to a very special Victorian camera.